So those Kansas City Chiefs are Super Bowl champions once again. They went back to back and Patrick Mahomes in the Patrick Mahomes era, the Chiefs are three time Super Bowl champions. That is crazy. Um, But they got it. They got it. They are the dynasty. They are the team that everybody's chasing right now. And the Baltimore Ravens especially. And there were some words by Chiefs player, Chris Jones specifically, that really hurt us Ravens fans' souls. Because he talked about the Kansas City Chiefs, the, the road to them getting here. Because as we know, normally the Kansas City Chiefs, home field advantage throughout the playoffs, usually number one seed. And they just the playoffs go through them. But not this year. This year, they had to take a different route. He talked about how they went against the Miami Dolphins, one of the most prolific offenses in the league this year. And then he talked about how they had to go against the Buffalo Bills and how that was a challenge because they had been steamrolling teams recently. But then when he spoke about the Baltimore Ravens, he said the Baltimore Ravens, he didn't say they were the best team in the AFC North. He didn't even say they were the best. Oh, my goodness. I heard saying it out loud, too. He didn't even say they were the best team in the AFC he didn't even say they were the best team that they went against in the playoffs this year. Well, he did say that, but he said the Baltimore Ravens were the best team in the NFL. <sighs> and it wasn't a jab. It wasn't him being petty or anything like that, but it's him more so just really talking about the toughness of the schedule in the playoffs that the Chiefs had to go against, and they overcame it. And his words hurt, though. They hurt, especially being a Ravens fan, especially watching that game, especially just envisioning it should have been us because that's how all of us were feeling. Uh, this was the year. It just felt like everything had lined up so perfectly for the Baltimore Ravens. But why did his words burn? Shout out to Usher, by the way. Well, we're going to talk about it. But before we do, let's hear a word from our sponsor. I know we all looking for even more ways to keep it clean. But let me introduce you to Mando. Mando is a whole body deodorant for everywhere. Literally everywhere. It goes on your armpits, your feet, your back, your knees. Literally everywhere. Because body odor doesn't just happen in your armpits. So why would that be the only place you put deodorant? Mando's name isn't the only thing that's powerful about it. It's been clinically proven to control body odor everywhere. While remaining gentle enough for your sensitive bits. Since I know you are ready to order your Mando, let me show you what the starter pack comes with. Solid stick deodorant with up to 72 hours of odor control. Cream tube deodorant so you have another option. It also comes with two free products of your choice. And my choice was the deodorant wipes and this body wash that I love. And it comes with free shipping so you can't beat that. And as a special offer for everybody watching this video right now. New customers get $5 off a Mando starter pack by using code engraven at shopmando.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit shopmando.com and use code engraven. And again, this is a special offer for Team Keep It Clean. As new customers, you'll get $5 off your Mando starter pack when you use code engraven at shopmando.com. Your body will thank you. Chris Jones' words certainly caused a different type of pain to us as Ravens fans, especially because this should have been the year. And we're going to talk about exactly why and, and what his words meant to us. But before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn your notifications on, even though it is the official offseason for everybody now. Um, we ain't going nowhere. We will continue to keep y'all up to date on all things Ravens and just across the NFL in general. So subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video. I know a lot of y'all probably looking at the background right now like, what is going on? We had a gender reveal, and team keep it clean. Y'all are getting ready to be aunts and uncles to a baby girl. So I appreciate y'all. I appreciate the, the love and support that y'all have been showing us for literally the longest. Uh, and I'll continue to appreciate any love and support that y'all continue to show. So I, I love y'all big time. Now, um, something that since we are family, our family, they go through things together. And this season, we went through a lot of highs, a couple of lows, not many lows, though, not too many. But we went through a lot of highs and, and some lows, too. And really thought that this would be the year. But with, with Chris Jones, with his words, saying that the Baltimore Ravens were the best team in the NFL, it was not a shot at the Ravens at all. It was not a diss to the Ravens at all. It was him just, again, more so co uh, commending his team on how well they did and all the tough battles that they had to get through to get to where they were at. Um, Baltimore Ravens, they squandered an opportunity. They, they, they squandered the season. This was the team. This was the coaching staff this was the roster this was injury wise too like you were on the right side of injuries we've been talking about this for years that we feel like that is one of the biggest things that have been holding this baltimore ravens team back it's been injuries injuries to key players especially with lamar jackson 
started in 2020. Ravens made the playoffs, but then Lamar got a concussion while they were down 17-3, and boom, that was that. Then the following year, they were top of the AFC North, the top of the AFC at one point. Then Lamar got hurt. It all came crashing down. And then 2022, they were, again, same thing, top of the AFC North, top of the AFC. Lamar got hurt. all came crashing down. But they had just did enough to make the playoffs, but then we were ho- had high hopes, but low expectations, and you know how that went with the whole Tyler Huntley game and the, the fumble. Anyway, um, Baltimore Ravens just continue to miss on opportunities, man. But this was probably their biggest missed opportunity, in my opinion, um, because it was right there in front of them, right there in front of them. And for somebody who just won the Super Bowl, and he is a key player on that Kansas City Chiefs team. He done been there for their recent Super Bowls. For somebody to have won the Super Bowl and come off and say that, they got a lot of respect for you. And they know because who, who would be able to fight against Chris Jones if he were to say, hey, us, the Kansas City Chiefs, we the best team in the NFL, and now we got the ring to show for it. Nobody can argue that. Because the Chiefs won. They the Super Bowl champions. But for him to be a Super Bowl winner, just won a Super Bowl, fresh off of winning the Super Bowl, not even 30 minutes ago, they won a Super Bowl in a close game, overtime game too. For him to be 30, not even 30 minutes removed from that. But still to say, the Baltimore Ravens, they the best team in the NFL. That's pain right there, man. That is painful right there because... Ravens wasted it. They wasted it. It it was right there, literally right in front of them. We talked about so many times throughout this year how the Baltimore Ravens, an opportunity was presented to them, and they took that opportunity and ran with it. Like It was like, oh, you want to be top of the AFC North? Well, this is what you got to do. Ravens did it. Oh, you want to be at top of the AFC? This is what you got to do. Ravens did it. Oh, you, you want to get the number one seed? This is what you got to do. Ravens did it. Oh, you want home field advantage through the playoffs? You want to be able to control your own destiny? This is what you got to do. Ravens did it every time. They did it. They did it. And I remember thinking so many times throughout this season, like, oh, man, I remember years past when Ravens would have an opportunity right in front of them. It will be right in front of them, and they'll be there for the taking, and then they, they just let it slip away. They didn't do that this year. Even at times I was thinking, well, you, you know those emotional games, those games where it takes everything out of you, like the Rams game, like that one. That was an overtime game. That game was insane. But even in that game, I was thinking the, the next week, like, oof, I want Ravens to win. I know they're a really good team, but coming off a game like that against the Rams where you gave everything and more, it took you an extra quarter to get the win. Ooh, I, I, I get it, man. If Ravens come up a little short in this, I, I, nope, they didn't do it, though. They didn't do it. Ravens had continued to take care of business, but in the biggest moment with the best team that you've had in years, you let the opportunity just go away. So now Ravens fans, uh, I can't speak for all of them, but it just makes you wonder, like, what are we going to do next time? I know I've seen so many Ravens fans continue to say it. We ain't worried about regular season. We don't care about regular season. We're just worried about what's going to happen in the playoffs. And I get that because that is a big concern. Like, Ravens fans know, like, okay, Lamar Jackson healthy. But most people on the team healthy. Ravens going to be straight in regular season. They're going to take care of business in regular season. But now, like, even – and this, this whole thing with the playoffs, with the Baltimore Ravens, it had already been something that had been a big concern for us already. We had talked about this plenty of times. That, yeah, regular season, we expected the Ravens to take care of their business. We expected the Ravens to be good in the regular season. I ain't expecting them to be great like they had been this past regular season. But I figured they were going to take care of business. But playoffs, that's where our biggest concern was. That's where the biggest, like, the biggest scare was. Because, like, oof, what are we going to do? What's going to go down? What's going to happen? And that first playoff game, it, it fooled a lot of us. Because in that first playoff game, it's like, oh, they starting off slow. It's 10-10 going into halftime. Ooh, I don't know about that, buddy. But guess what they did? They came out and they made adjustments. They made fixes. They made changes. And they took off. So we was like, oh, these ain't the same old Ravens, baby. Let's go. Bring on whoever going to be in that AFC championship. We ready for you. Whether it's going to be Buffalo, whether it's going to be KC. We're like, oh, we at the crib. We got this. 
they didn't have this. They didn't get it. They didn't. And the Ravens, they, they fell short of the ultimate goal again for the same reason again. Not being true to themselves. Not being true to themselves. I was just talking to somebody today on Twitter. Um, and they, they asked me the question. They said, oh, you see, you saw the, the, the 49ers. They, they ran the ball against the Chiefs, and it didn't matter. I said, no, 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 no. It, it did because they were always in the game. They were never out of the game, and they didn't forget who they were. They didn't. And the Chiefs even, like we talked about earlier, the, the, the Chiefs, they ran the ball. They were down at 10 at one point. They were still running the ball. Because when you run the ball, and it's like with the Baltimore Ravens, it just is again, it remains a head scratcher. Like, how do you get into the biggest moment of the season against this team that's a bad run defense? And you decide, you know what, I'm, we're not going to run the ball. No thanks. We ain't doing that. It's like, hold up. And, and the run, even if they weren't a bad run defense, it's like the, the run can help set up the pass. If you can run the ball, that can open up play action. If you can run the ball, that can diversify your offense that much more and just it can expand things for you make a lot of life easier for you on offense but the ravens said no 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 no, we, we're not doing that we are going to make this game 10 times harder than what it should be 10 times harder and you see the result they lost and what's crazy is that the baltimore ravens they were losing all game but they were not out of it. They were right there, and offense just let them down big time. Big time. Play calling was suspect. Offense was suspect. Everything, it was just suspect. Defense was a suspect. So I can't say everything was suspect, but offense was just it was terrible. It's terrible. And it's like, and I was talking to one of my other guys a couple days ago. He said, you know, you know what happened with the Baltimore Ravens? These last three playoff losses? I was like, what? They, the running backs only got six carries? He said, no. He said, um, they lost the ball at the goal line in each loss. And I said, oh. He said, they lost the, the ball with, within five yards of the end zone in each loss. I said, oh, you, you're right. You're right. Because he talked about the Zay Flowers, that fumble. Uh, he talked about the, the, the Lamar Jackson interception, even though it should have been pass interference, but... Okay, cool. And you and did y'all see that too? Again, we talked about the refs already, but y'all saw the refs called that holding call last night. But that same same call against Isaiah Likely, they were like, Ooh. but anyway, um, there was the the Zay Flowers fumble at the end zone. There was Lamar Jackson interception of Likely that happened in the end zone. Uh, so that was that game. Then the previous game, there was the Tyler Huntley the dive over the top. At the end zone, well, the fumble uh, that went back for seven because it was what Sam Hubbard. I want to say Sean Hubbard, Sam Hubbard, Hubbard. I forget his first name. Uh, but then in the uh, 2020 playoff game before that, uh, it was the Lamar Jackson pick six. So all plays where Ravens were literally right there and the ball ends up going the other way. So they don't even get three. They obviously don't get seven, but they don't even get three. So, again, the bottom line, uh, just like with those turnovers uh, at, in the end zone, just like with Baltimore Ravens this year, it's a big missed opportunity.